Hey team, let's look at buffer systems. Now, what would a buffer system be? A buffer system is any system that prevents or regulates the pH um, in case of changes, okay? So if an acid or a base is added, so protons or hydroxide ions are added, it will minimize any changes to the system altogether. Um, we generally use weak acids and their conjugate bases. So weak bases and the conjugate acids if you want. Um, strong acids disassociate completely and what this means is there are no conjugate pairs in solution. Now a really good example is ethanoic acid. So here we've got the parent acid with, and this is the hydrogen that comes off, and this is the conjugate base. Okay, so it's missing that. Now, because there will be leftover acids, parent acids that are undissociated, un and conjugate bases floating around, if we add some hydroxide ions, these ones here can donate a proton to a so if a hydroxide ion comes in, these guys can donate this proton away over to here and it will not change, so it will prevent a change in the pH because hydroxide ions come in, but it's been mopped up from one of these guys that are still unionized, undissociated. Or if a bonus hydrogen ion or proton comes in, this guy here that's floating around can bond it to him, and you'll find that that won't change the hydrogen ion won't change the hydronium ion concentration here because see this one was not involved this did not get involved at all so the number of um, or the concentration of hydrogen ions or hydronium ions is unchanged and that's what a buffer system does it mops up any changes that come into it pH wise now there are limitations obviously um, if you put too many in, it won't be able to cope with it and then the pH will change, but it will resist the pH change for a long time. So natural buff buffer systems are super important, particularly in biological and ecological systems. Internal pH changes can be catastrophic to an organism. It will die if the pH goes up or down by a very, very small amount. Um, so freshwater lakes and rivers... They use, similar to blood actually, they use a carbonic acid hydrogen carbonate ion system to maintain its pH, to regulate its pH against changes. Um, so these are the ions we're talking about. So we've got, uh, or, or molecules for that matter. We have hydrogen carbonate, sorry, carbonic acid there, or a hydrogen carbonate ion. So this is our acid, um, this is the base, or no, this is the acid, this is the conjugate base. You can tell this is the acid because it has lost a proton and on this side, the um, charge has gone to negative. That means this is the acid, this is the conjugate base. So hydrogen car sorry, carbonic acid and hydrogen carbonate, they're present in natural water systems, particularly lakes and rivers for two reasons. One, the equilibrium that exists between dissolved carbon dioxide and the air, and two, dissolved hydrogen carbonate in rocks. It's actually, it's a, it's a salt which, or an ion, which is present in rocks and they dissolve, and there we go. Um, but this is the formula or the, the equilibrium of it existing in water. So the, the carbon dioxide gas um, dissolves in the water near the surface and it becomes carbonic acid. The same thing happens in the blood. You breathe in carbon dioxide, and in the watery medium of blood, it becomes carbonic acid. Um, so this gives the weak acid conjugate base buffer. Um, so that is the weak acid conjugate base pairing, which will buffer against pH changes. Um, for example, hydrogen carbonate here is our acid. This is the conjugate base. Water, in this case, is our base. Remember, water is the amphiprotic. Um, water is our base, and the conjugate acid is the hydronium ion on the other side. 
So what does that look like? Let, let's have a look and we'll use the hydrogen carbonate and um, carbonic acid system as an example. So here we are. We've got our carbonic acid here in, dissolved into solution and we add hydrochloric acid to that solution and it dissociates. It, it dissociates completely. So what happens next is this one here, which is the um, hydrogen carbonate ion, will bond up to that hydrogen ion, the proton that's been released from the hydrochloric acid. So what you'll notice now is that the carbonate, the hydrogen carbonate acts as a base, accepts that proton, and it maintains the hydrogen ion concentration, which is a, a function of, or pH is a function of hydrogen ion concentration. So you have a no net, cha no net change in the concentration of hydrogen ions. Now, the chloride ion, that's gone up, okay? That's gone up, that changed. But the hydrogen ion did not increase. Now, one went in, or a few went in, and these hydrogen carbonates just went in and mopped them up. Um, if we add a base to solution, we add sodium hydroxide here, um, it enters the solution and disassociates. Now, the sodium is not a problem. It doesn't change the pH at all. This one will increase the pH. So the hydrogen will decrease it. The hydroxide will increase the pH. Now, basically, a, hydrogen, a free hydrogen ion shoots across and bonds with the hydroxide, soaks it up. Now, you'll notice that it was not a free hydrogen ion the way I just said. It has come from a carbonic acid molecule. That carbonic acid molecule, molecule will disassociate and it will join up with the hydroxide ion. So there has been no change in concentration of, hydro, of hydrogen ions, no change in concentration of hydroxide ions because they got mopped up. We do have extra, extra um, hydrogen carb carbonate ions in there, but they don't directly affect the pH, so that's fine. Um, so there is no net change in hydrogen ion concentration or hydroxide ion concentration. All right, so I hope that made sense. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye now.